Hello and welcome to a follow-up video on the Islamic star patterns uh, coding challenge that I did. So this is, I don't know if this is really technically a coding challenge or what, but I had some so many wonderful suggestions and ideas that came out of that coding challenge that I thought it would be worth doing a follow-up video just to add uh, some features to it as well as correct I don't know if error is the right word, but certainly a major sort of flaw in the way that I built that particular example. So um, this, by the way, is the current state of the community created version. Um, people have submitted pull requests where now there are uh, sort of nicer sliders for controlling the delta and the angle. There is, uh, I can turn on and off the grid. I can try different types of uh, tiling patterns. So I encourage you to check this out and contribute to it. The link to this, the GitHub repository for this particular version of it is in this video's description. Now, where I left it off if you were watching just the actual coding challenge was with this. And so just to remind you, the way to, one technique as pioneered by a, a paper that I'll also link to by Craig Kaplan to create these star patterns. Okay, so the, the way that the paper describes how to do this algorithm is to take a polygon, a quad, a hexagon, and to emanate rays, these are called uh, it's sort of a, a technique called the Hankin technique, which I talked a lot about in the previous video. <laughs> uh, strange word to say, but it works. Um, to send out rays from the side, and then send out rays from this side, and then connect them. So where they connect, and you'll see if you do this from all the sides and you tile the polygons in all interesting different ways, you'll get these uh, beautiful star-like patterns, and um, they're wonderful. I enjoy them. They're nice tiling patterns. So. Um, what I did, I over-engineered it, I believe, uh, in that I made this like polygon object and this edge object and then this Hankin object, and then I said, for every edge, send the ray out and check every other edges in the ray and then figure out where they're all intersecting, then find the one that's the closest. It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of like useful math in there and good thinking. But really, with these types of regular symmetrical polygons, those rays are always, always, always going to meet along uh, a very specific, along the sort of, the. The, the, I don't know what to call this, the bisector <laughs> of, uh, th they're going to meet at a very precise location that we can calculate pretty easily with something called the law of signs. So uh, this was suggested by uh, Gabriel on Twitter, uh, who sent me a tweet saying, hey, you know what you could do? You could use the law of signs to calculate the length of the Henkin uh, just because you know the angle and you know the length of the edge of the polygon and with some math You'll be able to calculate that length So that's what I, the first thing I want to do is really simplify the code to use this law of signs So let's look at what is the law of signs? This is the law of signs now <clears throat> we could derive this from taking a triangle and dividing it into right triangles But the simplest way to sort of define it is I'm gonna I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna press this button. I'm gonna come over here, ah, I got this. I'm gonna draw a triangle. And the triangle's going to have three sides, A, B, and C, and it also has three angles. We can call this angle maybe alpha, this angle we'll call beta, and this angle I'm just gonna call theta, I don't know. I got the C off, I'm, my Greek letters aren't, aren't the best. So the law of sign states that um, alpha, sorry, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. A divided by sine of alpha equals, so A, the, look at the, the side that's adjacent, that's opposite the angle. And by A, I mean the length of this. The length of this equals uh, B divided by sine of beta equals C divided by sine of theta. So this is a formula, and we could figure this out because you know if we put a right triangle here, we're going to see that we're going to be able to do things like sine of beta equals uh, this length over A, sine of alpha equals this length over B, and if we do some math, we're going to end up with this, this equation. So this is quite of a useful equation in a lot of geometry scenarios. Now, why is it relevant in this particular scenario? Okay. Let's go back to that polygon. Let's say we have, and I'm really just gonna recreate the diagram that uh, Gabriel so nicely sent to me. So let's say we have this polygon. And let's say we have a ray emanating from here. I'm also gonna draw a line that splits this particular angle in half. So now I'm gonna draw, now I'm gonna send that Hankin out. 
This is the Henkin. It goes out like this, and the other one goes out like this, right? So these angles are equal. I'm going to call these angles theta. These angles are the angles in my application that I'm setting with that slider that's changing the direction. They're always going to meet right here. As they turn in, turn out, they're going to meet somewhere along this path. So we know this angle, theta. Boy, can you see this? <laughs> to zoom in on this. And now this angle I'm going to call alpha. We know that angle because we know the angle, the interior angle of a polygon. And actually, there's a formula. I think this is right. For any polygon of n sides, the interior angle equals uh, n minus 2 times pi. Is that right? Because it's got four sides. The number of sides minus 2 times pi divided by, and that's the interior angle, because this is the sum. So if you think about this, this is equal to, with a, with a quad, this is equal to 2 pi divided by 4, which is then pi divided by 2, which is right, that's a 90 degree angle. Okay, so, so <laughs> that's leading me to say we know alpha, because alpha is the interior angle of the polygon and also divided by 2. So what do I really need to know? What I want to know is the length of the Henkin. Because I know the direction of the Henkin because I'm calculating that myself. I'm making it up. It's a line with an angle. So I need to know the length of it. So what I do know is, right, that length, Henkin length, I'm going to call it H length, divided by sine of alpha equals what? Well, here's something else known, right? I know this length. This is that mid length, half length. This is the edge length. So I'm going to say that's the edge length divided by 2 equals edge length divided by 2 divided by, what's this? Let's call this angle uh, beta, sine of beta. But how do I know that angle? I don't know that angle. I know theta because that's an angle I made up. I know alpha because that's half of the interior angle of the polygon. But what's this angle? Well, actually, that angle is really easy to figure out because alpha plus beta, oh, sorry, theta plus beta ah, plus alpha equals pi, right? The sum of all the angles of any triangle equals 180 degrees or pi. So now I can actually just change this to sine of, right? Uh, what am I trying to figure out? Beta? Beta equals pi minus theta minus alpha. Pi minus theta minus uh, alpha. And then what I can just do is multiply both sides of this equation um, by sine of alpha. And I can say now times sine of alpha. So this is now a formula to calculate that Henkin length. The Henkin length, I need a Henkin. I got a Henkin for a Henkin length. The Henkin length is the edge length divided by 2 times sine of alpha divided by sine of pi minus theta minus alpha, okay? So let's see now if we can actually just radically simplify the code by implementing this particular formula and seeing if we get it right. Okay, coming back over here. Um, so let's go to the code. Now again, this is I think quite over-engineered in the sense that I have a separate object for each edge, a separate object for each Henkin, a separate object for each polygon. Eh, that's maybe, um, that's maybe um, a little bit much for this, especially now that the format's that simple. But I, I give that as a challenge. If anybody wants to help submit something to like really simplify this, you know, I don't know that we need all these different objects. But I'm going to use them. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into the edge. And if you recall, the code in this.hanken does all this work to first find, the first thing that's fine is the midpoint. Then we need a vector that points from the midpoint to the edge. And then uh, what we're doing is using delta to offset those things. So this is all the same. The difference is, and then we rotate by the angle. So now the question is here, it's a, uh, this is what's totally unnecessary. This find ends function. This find ends function was checking everything. Because I can actually now, I can just do law of signs right here. This is all I need. All I need is once I've got those vectors normalized and pointed in the right direction, I just need to give them a length, right? Right here in this part is where I am 
uh, here. So I've calculated both of these vectors, and I just need to figure out what their length should be. So I can actually do that math right there, which eliminates the need for this whole find ends function, and also in the, maybe in the polygon object, right, this whole like every edge check every other edge, totally unnecessary. We can just actually tell them all, calculate your own Hankin and use that, <laughs> calculate your own Hankin and use the law of sines. So let's go here and let's use that law of sines. So what did I say? I'm going to look back over at that formula for a second. I said that the Hankin length, Hankin length equals, now let's, let's make some things a little bit simpler. So let's say var beta, right? Uh, I need beta is, what did I say? It's pi minus, um, pi minus theta minus alpha. So uh, pi minus angle with theta minus alpha. Now we don't have alpha. What is alpha? So right now I'm just going to say alpha equals pi divided by 2, and this is a silly way to write it, divided by 2. But really I'm going to need, um, uh, later I'm going to need some formula. I'm going to uh, calculate, actually, you know what, let's just assume, let's, let's do it this way. Alpha equals, so interior, the interior angle equals uh, sides minus, um, minus 2 times pi divided by sides. This is me calculating the interior angle for a polygon. Now, then also I want to say then alpha equals the interior angle divided by 2 or multiplied by 0.5. So beta equals pi minus the angle minus alpha. That's that. So now h length equals the edge length. Now what is the edge length? The edge length is what? Well, it, this is a vector up here. This is a vector that points from the middle to the edge. So the length of these two vectors, right, is, is actually just the magnitude of that. So I can get the edge length right here, edge length, but also plus delta. Right? Remember that delta is the thing that offsets it from the middle point. So the edge length is actually the length from the middle to the edge plus that delta. So that I have up here. So I already have E length. So I can say the Hankin length equals uh, an, uh, E length. And you know what I said in here? I, this was a sort of generic formula which was E length divided by 2, but I already have that built in because the vector I calculated is this thing plus the delta. So in my formula, I don't need this divided by 2 here if this is uh, length divided by 2 there. Okay, so what I have is edge length times sine of alpha and then divided by sine of the angle. What's the chance? And then I can just say v1 dot set mag h length, right? Those two vectors are the Hankins. And v2 equals set mag. So all you do is set the magnitude of those vectors. OK, now, haha, -ha, I'm going to make that new Hankin object. So the Hankin object did all this elaborate stuff because it was trying to figure out the end, blah, 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 blah. I don't need this b anymore. This is the end. The end is the point from where it starts plus the vector, that Hankin vector. And I don't need this previous D, any of this stuff anymore. So I believe, and I don't need this find N function, which did all this elaborate math for looking at point intersection. I've got a much simpler scenario now. So that's why this Hankin object is perhaps not so necessary, because I've got this very basic object now that just has a beginning and an end point. And I could really call this, I might call this B, um, to be honest with you. Um, just to simplify things. Okay, let's go back and run the code. Looks the same to me. So nothing has changed. But I don't, you can't really tell, but if this were like a much larger polygon or pattern, it, I think the performance-wise it should be a little bit faster. It's also simpler, it's more flexible. So, um, so this is working. We added the law of signs to the star pattern. So this video, uh, this concludes the discussion of how to improve and make much simpler uh, calculating all the Hankin uh, vertices 
with the law of sines. And hopefully you also just sort of learn something about geometry and, and that you might apply to your own scenario that you're figuring out in some pattern. Now, what would be useful is to also, as another step, to work out different um, tiling patterns. And again, I can show you a bunch here. Uh, here's a hexagonal tiling pattern. And if I um, make the delta much smaller and the angle uh, like this, you can see, right? You can see this is a hexagonal tiling pattern and you can see how those Henkin vertices uh, connect and make these star patterns. So, um, so I encourage you to experiment to contribute to this repository. There's a nice way in this repository that you can just add a tiling pattern. If you take a look at it, you just make your own JavaScript file that implements the tiling pattern and it folds right into the... So I encourage you to contribute to this. And I will, if there's enough interest, come back and do another video which just goes through other tiling patterns. And I really actually want to do something about aperiodic tiling patterns at some point. So I'll come back. So thanks for watching this small addendum correction uh, with the law uh, about the law of signs and uh, Hankin star patterns.